everyone, it's Carmen Tutorials and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a standard rig within Blender. This will be good for humanoid assets with the tutorial that we're doing today and like I said it's a very simple one. It's good for poses and a standard walk animation. So I'm using a asset that I bought from the Unity Asset Store from Infinity PBR, I believe. Um, they make the most amazing assets. I did actually add the cube over the chest just because they're very realistic and I thought it might be a bit of a distraction. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is click the Y axis so we get a front on view of our asset. The next thing that we're gonna do is scroll in with the mouse scroll button and then two buttons down on the right hand side, we're just gonna move our asset into screen. Just make sure that your head, your pelvis area is in screen because it would just make it a little bit easier. We're then going to make sure that we click our asset so it's highlighted and then we move back down into the pelvis area and make sure that we click our cursor. If we press shift A and then what we're going to do is we're going to find the armature. Sometimes your armature can come out a little bit too small or too big uh, just like mine here. So if I go to the object properties and then if I just scale mine up to roughly about 15 at the moment, um, don't forget as well, we have got it hidden behind the mesh at the moment, which we will change in a second. Um, so as you can see, that's just got bigger, but it is hidden. So if we go back onto the same tab and then if we just click in front. Now we've got that, you can either press G or I like to use the arrows and just move it up into belly line. So then what we're going to do is click the armature again, just drop that down, click armature and then I'm just going to grab the move arrow and then just drag it down to invert it down to the pelvis. I'll then click E again to make another bone, so this is actually extrude and then if you just extrude it up to the belly button we do the waist area and then we do the chest, we do the neck and then if we do the head. Perfect, so now we're going to click the X axis so we get a side on view and then if we go up to the select box, if we just select all the bones that we've just made and then three buttons down on the left hand side to the move or you can press G you can drag them over just so they're more aligned with the actual body. Just to make it a little bit more realistic, I think we'll add a curve. So if you select the box again, if you just make sure that you highlight that neck bone. If you click move and just give it a little bend. And I think we'll do the same for the pelvis area. Okay, perfect. This will actually help out as well when we end up adding our controllers. We're going to make sure that we're facing the asset again. If we use mouse scroll, we'll select the asset's body again. If we click in the chest area and then shift A, we'll create a small armature. This will automatically, like I said, create themselves. And then if we just drag it into place. Because it's already created the armature, we don't need to change the scale. And then if I zoom out, we'll just get the arm into place so we can get a bit of a better focus. And then we'll just click E again for extrude. We get the top of the arm. We create the lower arm. And then we'll just create a small bone for the hand. If we press Z, we'll get into top down view. And the same as what we've done before. If we just drag this into position of roughly where we want it in the arm. And then we'll just highlight the elbow area and then we'll drag it out as this will actually help us a lot when we come to do like the leg controller, the arm controller. Um, so yeah, it just saves a lot of time in the long run. Okay, so if we do the same for our leg then, if we drag it down into position. Um, and then if we just make sure as well that we have got it around the actual hip line you just select the cursor and then shift A. Do the same again that we'll use the move arrows. As I just find that it gives you a bit more of a precise, um, a precise angle. So if we press E again, we'll create the bottom of the leg. 
and then just do it roughly to where you think the heel area will be. Then if we press X and go into side view, we'll highlight our bones. And then we'll just make sure we are going to move around some of the joints in a second. Um, just make sure that it's more aligned. I think that might be a bit too far down for now, but we can sort that out. So we go with the knee, remove that. And then if we move our foot joint roughly to the heel area and then just pull it up. Obviously you can spend a lot more time in your own time making sure that the bones are perfect. Um, but we're just trying to get through this tutorial for now. So if we extrude the foot area from the heel, we'll go back into front view focus. We'll select it and then we'll just drag it more into into view. Just drag the foot across. And there, there you have it. We have our first bone structure. Okay, so when I was off camera, I just went round and aligned some of the bones quick. What we need to do is rename some of these bones so that when we come to mirror it, it won't be too confusing. So if we go into the little symbol with the bones, the bone properties, I've just named this the lower leg dot R. Like I said, this will be important when we come to mirror it to the left hand side. So we've got the upper leg dot R, the shoulder dot R. We have the upper arm dot R, the lower arm dot R, and the hand dot R. Then we have the head, the neck, the chest, we have the waist. I left this one as just a standard bone, the original one, and then the bo bottom one I renamed hips. Perfect. So what we need to do now is we do actually need to add the controls in. So if we highlight the lower leg, so off of the bone, we can extrude it out. And then if we just shift this round to the Z axis, we can just make sure that we've got it in a straight straight line. And then if we call this the leg control dot R. And then now if we end up going to the X axis, we can get in front of the knee a bit like where my castle is already. If we just click around that area, we'll shift A and then we'll drag it out again. Obviously be sure to make sure that it's pointing away from the actual knee. And then if we just turn it to the Z axis again and then we'll drag it into place in front of the knee. Um, yeah, we'll drag it over a little bit more. Okay, so if we go onto the X axis again, we're going to do the same for the elbow now. So if we just click behind the elbow with Shift A, and then we'll drag it out to the right. And if we press Z and go into a top down view, uh, got this Z. And then we'll just select it, right hand, click on the mouse. And then we'll just pull it over so it's roughly behind the elbow. Then if we call this elbow control dot R. Once we've renamed our controller, we do actually need to make a hand controller. So if we just press the second button down on the right, we'll move our asset into place with right hand click. Press Shift and D to duplicate this asset and you don't have to but you can press G and just drag it out and have a look. As you can see it's quite hard to see so if we go to Object Data Properties which looks like the little man running, we'll go to Viewpoint Display, Display As and we'll change this to B Bone. With the bone selected we'll press Ctrl Alt and then S and we'll just drag out diagonally. This really just makes it a little bit easier for us to see and if we rename this now in the bone properties to hand control R. Okay great, so now we need to add what will be like a master control. So if we mouse scroll in, we'll click in between our assets legs, we'll shift and A. Then we'll select our bone, we'll control alt and then S again. And then if we just drag that out. You don't have to do this, but I think what I'm going to do is change this to master control, um, just really for our own reference. Awesome. So now that we've got our bones and controllers, we can actually start linking them.
Okay, so let's link our bone. So if you right hand click the mouse on the upper leg joint, if you click more towards the back, you'll select your hips. And then if you control P, we can then link it with the complete uh, keep offset. What we're then going to do is grab our unnamed bone from earlier and then change this to hip control. I think what I'll do as well is I won't size it up just so you can see the actual benefit of having a controller that is a bit larger. So if we just grab the elbow now and the shoulder, control P, keep offset. And then if we just do the same as well for the knee and the leg control. So if we select the leg control, control P, keep offset. And I think we need to do one for the shoulder and the chest. So if we select them, control P, and then keep offset. The last one that we now need to link is the actual controllers. So if we grab the leg control, the hand control, the hip control, and then the master control, control P, keep offset. There, so yeah, we've officially got our bones linked together. I made my mesh slightly transparent as this next bit's a little bit tedious, but if you right hand click the lower leg bone, if you go to edit mode and then go into pose mode. What I'll do is I'll just move that a little bit closer so it's slightly easier for us to see. And then what we're gonna have to do is add a bone constraint. So if you go to the bone constraints, add bone constraint, and then go to inverse kinematics. Once we're in there, we need to change the target to armature. And then we need to change the bone here to the leg control bone, as this will, well, pretty self-explanatory, but control the legs on the bone, uh, or the legs on the bone, the bones on the legs. So if we now change the chain length to two, and this will allow our leg control to basically control the lower leg and the upper leg. Now if we change the pole target to armature again, and then we'll create the knee as the bone. It has changed the pole angle, so depending, I can see that that's opposite, so I would most likely need about 180. Um, but sometimes it would just need 90, sometimes it's okay. So yeah, now that we've got that in place, this should work. So if we right hand click our bottom one, you can press G. And there, there you have it. We have our first moving leg. If I move to the side, Well, anyway, um, basically what we need to do is we'll do the exact same thing for the lower arm bone. So if we right mouse click, we'll change the bone constraints, add a bone constraint to inverse kinematics. We'll change the target again to armature. We'll change the bone to the hand control. And then it will keep this uh, chain length as two as it will control the lower and the upper arm. We don't want it to obviously control the shoulder. Perfect. So now if we change the pole target to armature and then we'll make the bone this elbow bone. Sorry, you might hear my dog scratching. Um, so yeah, the pole angle, again, I can see it is facing up, so I know I'd need minus 90, but of course this can differ depending um, on where your asset is. So if we select our hand control in G, hey, yeah, so it's working. Um, what we need to do is, as you can quite clearly see that our hand isn't actually rotating with the hand control, which um, obviously you can get more poses in if you can control the hands. So we need to make sure that we've actually got the hand R selected and not the hand control. We need to add a bone constraint and this time it's copy rotation. In the target rotation, it's the same armature. And then we're going to make it the hand control. We don't actually need to do anything else with this one, so if we just select it, um, 
perfect now that we've sorted out the rotation on the hand what we need to do is go around and turn off the deform on the controls within our asset do this by selecting your hand control go down to bone properties and then deselecting deform so you need to do this like i said for the other controls in the scene so the leg control the master control Basically what this does is if you had your asset in a program like Unity, it just means that it won't affect the mesh. So we do the last one of the elbow. While I was off the screen, I just went into edit mode that you can get to with the drop down tab with the pose mode. What we need to do now is we need to select the bones down the right hand side of the screen. So if you press C, then left mouse click and we will select the bones. Be sure not to select obviously the center bones. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Tools tab. You can get to the Tools tab by clicking this arrow on the right hand side of the screen or N, making sure that you're in Tools and clicking X Axis Mirror. When you're on X Axis Mirror, if you press Ctrl and S, go to Cursor to Weld Origin. This will set our cursor directly below the asset, then we'll go up to the Armature and then we'll find the symmetrize, which will just mirror the bones from the right hand side to the left hand side. Once we've got the bones there, we go back into our tools tab, so N, and then we'll deselect our X axis mirror. We'll go back into the pose mode now, and to be honest, my arm actually should be okay. We'll try it in a minute if we select the hand control. So right hand click and then press G. We move that around. I kind of thought that my arm would be okay because we had the uh, right hand side set at minus 90, so I knew it would just mirror that. But as you see, the bottom of our leg is not okay because we set it to an angle at 180. So if we just reset that back to zero. And now we only have one thing left to do, which is actually the fun bit of adding the bones to the asset. I love this bit because to me it feels like my character's coming to life. But just a super quick reminder that this is a really, really basic tutorial. That if you wanted something more in depth, like finger rigging, actual like more proportionate sizing, um, or why controls are actually controls, then feel free to comment below. I just wanted to have something that was easy to follow along and ready for people's poses or their simple walk animations. I know that the asset on screen looks a tiny bit different than the one that we've been using, but it's the exact same one. I simply just went into object mode, I gave it a material, changed it to node, and gave it a base colour of red. I am actually working on my own project at the moment, so I thought I'd utilise the time of posing in Blender, and I removed the headers in that colour, it was a little bit difficult for you to see the head bones. So if we now go to scene collections and click armature, then we'll go over to the drop down menu and click object mode. Once we're in object mode, we just press Ctrl and P. Then we're going to find the with envelope weights. Once we're over that, we're going to click it and that should add our bones to the asset. So if we go back over into pose mode now. If I just move this into position so we can actually get a side on view of the leg. And then we're just gonna right mouse click the leg controller and then press G. We press G now. Perfect. So it's now actually moving the assets. I hope that's the same on your side as well and you enjoyed this tutorial. We still have the arm to check out. So if we just move up now, we just move across and then if we right hand click on the hand control, if we press G, we can now move that around. Okay, great. So we have now come to the end of our tutorial for the super simple rig. I hope this was able to help you out with some standard poses and some very basic walk animations. If it did, then please like and comment below. It would be great to know that I've helped some of you. If any of you are confused, then definitely comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you ASAP. Like I also mentioned earlier in the video, if you are wanting to see a more in-depth tutorial, like uh, more position of the bones, finger rigging, um, why the controls are actually the controls, then be sure to comment and I will do that for you.